This episode is brought to you by MPB. Get cash for the kit you're not using or trade it in for the gear you want at mpb.com. Hey, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique, episode number 167, Open General. This is Twip. Hey everybody, welcome back to another TWIP Pro Photo Critique. This is episode number 167. We set the topic for this episode as open. So come as you are, submit whatever you want. And we got a nice little salad of images to walk through this week. Joining me to uh, critique this batch, this batch of images is my good friend, Mr. Troy Miller. Troy, how's it going over there? Good, good. Thanks, hey, Frederick. Yeah, we got a good set going in there. A good salad of images. Is that what you said? Salad? I said salad of images. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't I'm know sweet. where they came from. It just comes out. I don't know where it came <laughs> Good salad. I like plethora. 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 Of well, there's only eight, so it's more like a salad this time. <laughs> okay. It's only eight. Yeah, images. an abundance. Yeah. So what's going on down there before we dive in? Anything special happening in, the, uh, in Southern California? It's hot. It's yeah. freaking hot. I don't I don't like it hot. It's hot yeah. at night. It's hot during the day. I can't ride my mountain bike. I'm frustrated. You're just spoiled, <laughs> You're just spoiled because you were hanging out in Denver yeah. where they have normal weather, right? <laughs> I am spoiled. And and I'm in a I'm in a part of the state that's not on fire right now. So that's true. I'm very spoiled. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I have a friend, a good friend of mine has a place in uh, Lake South Lake Tahoe, and he's been dealing with, of course, the fire, so he's worried about that, and then it was rioters or looters, so he was worried about looting of his place, and then bears apparently have realized that people aren't there, <laughs> so there were, like bears with their babies on people's decks and all that stuff, so, you know, but... The other side of that coin is you have a vacation place in South Lake Tahoe. So shut the hell up. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but no. Yeah. yeah but uh, apparently they've uh, people today slash yesterday are returning to their homes. So oh, hopefully I think it looks like the, the fire folks have gotten it under control up there. Crazy yeah. times, man. Crazy times. So, yeah, it is what it is. So what do you say we dive into this critique? Yeah, yeah, there's some great images in here. Yeah, yeah, let's take a look. So here we are in the Twip Pro general photo critique area. Let me refresh my screen just to make sure there no one tried to slip in under the wire as they do. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do the same. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, Armando. He says, my photo for the open category this week, some Indians believe when they feed the birds, they take the food for some god. Interesting. So hmm. let's take a look. Very I cool. like this shot. I like this shot a lot. But then I like composites, and I like things that are surrealistic like this. And this... Yeah, I, I like this. This this one drew me in. I had to stare at it for quite some time just to kind of soak it all in. What, what do you think? I I love it right away. It's it really made me just say, wow. You know, it's it's got such a good story. Um, I love the effect of the room. Um, mm -hmm. You know, not not just you know the open beach area and stuff like that. I love the fact that it feels like I'm in a room. So it creates more tension for me because then I, I feel like, oh, I really want to be there, but it's not real. It's just a projection. So where am I? You know, like <laughs> I'm in a cell somewhere. So, I mean, you know, my post-apocalyptic brain goes there because that's the books I read. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So <laughs> even, even so much so, you know, we've got this woman or somebody in the dog sitting over on the right, which is like, oh. Would they were they maybe my family like my friends and like <laughs> you can yeah. see my brain really goes really goes there uh -huh. um, yeah but but aside from that i i love the concept uh you know kudos to you armando for for putting this together a couple a couple nitpicks um the left seam that we have which we would call like that corner of the wall uh, at the horizon, it doesn't line up with the left side and the back horizon. Um, I can see where it doesn't line up. Oh, right here. And 
a little bit lower, right at the horizon where the sand basically meets each oh. other. Yeah. Right yeah. There. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Just, just, you know, to, to sell the realism a little bit, mm -hmm. right. Would be, mm -hmm. would be to do that. Uh, the right side looks pretty good. It's off a tiny bit, but only a tiny bit. And then the seam on the left is coming down right to the boat. And I, you know, it's not that way on the right hand side as much. I would, I would play with that a little bit. So it, blended in a little bit better but other other than that i mean that's really the only thing that i see that sort of like holds me back mm -hmm. yeah yeah but great concept right this is what a what a, what a great concept and yeah, the, know you know the, uh, in the narrative that he put around this you know that you know some birds take the food up to to gods or the god or whatever that's that it makes you think about it when you're looking at this and it kind of you know, it's, it, it doesn't necessarily exactly map one-to-one -to, -one to this image, but it doesn't necessarily need to. It's like, okay, what was the right. artist thinking, you know, when, when they put this image out there? And it adds just another layer of interest to the image. Yeah, this, I mean, maybe just for me, because I just recently finished reading a book where this guy was a, a prisoner in this high-tech high, high um, facility, and they would project things around him like this. And he hated it because he was in a prison and he knew it. So stop lying to me. And then seeing the room figure, you know, the room, you know, architecture in this image, I'm like, oh, that is so yeah. good. Yeah. Album cover right there, band uh -huh. name right across the top. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. All right. Armando, thank you for this, man. Very cool. Excellent work, sir. Love it. All right. Next up is... Who's next? Here we go. Eric, Eric Pronsky says old truck infrared. Oh, let me, let me bring it up. <clears throat> he said, <clears throat> excuse me. He said old truck infrared black and white image taken near Jackson, California in the Sierra foothills on a recent trip. The square crop worked the best to crop off much of the roof of the barn, which was very bright and distracting. A slight sepia tone was added to the image. Okay. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's nice. I knew you were gonna say nice. Anything infrared, anything with I, white, know, anything with white trees, you're gonna go for. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good infrared too, though. I mean, the conversion is good. Um, you know, the highlights aren't blown out. They got a nice dark sky in the background, creates that nice contrast. The shadows have some good contrast going on. Um, I, I I really like that. I I don't know that I would <clears throat> that I would keep this crop though. I mean, I love the truck. I think I, I don't need the barn. So I think I would just crop in on the truck and mm. center the truck and just let the barn go. You know? And we've got our we've got our infrared kind of foliage coming out of the bumper on the truck right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But you'd still you I mean, you'd crop tight. You'd still include some of this background foliage, right? So not so tight as it to to make it just the truck. So you'd have maybe crop around right here, you think? Yeah, something like that. I, I wish there was a little more space to the left, put the truck in the center and mm -hmm. be able to see the tree line. Um, you know, but you could, you could crop, I think a little bit more of that barn coming off would be okay. Maybe half the barn and maybe half the sky, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. So kind of like that and that. Yeah. 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 And I agree with you a little bit more space on this side of the frame to, because the truck is kind of cheating in that direction. Right. So just to give it a little, some place to go. Exactly. And then I don't know, um, Eric, if you, if you noticed it or not, or if, Frederick, if you can see it, but dead center, which would be just to the right of the truck, it's a little soft. Like the Here. contrast is a little bit soft. Yeah. And that, that's the nature of some infrared lenses. It creates this a little bit of flare inside the camera. So um, just be aware of that. And the way you can fix that is, is if uh, you're in, in Lightroom, you can just use a little bit of clarity or dehaze, kind of brush it in there and bring that contrast, that mid-tone contrast up. Um, same thing in uh, Light Capture One. You could just use some levels or use the dehaze and brush it in there and bring that contrast up. But that's, that's just something that infrared does. Yeah. Yeah. 
I like it though. Very cool. You but guys are going to push me to get an infrared, get one of my bodies converted to infrared eventually. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Well, when you get that Sony. I know, but you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Cause you know what holds me back? Cause I'm thinking, let me put it back on us. I'm thinking like, you know, you could, ha you could get one converted, but it, does it make sense to convert a micro for third body? Because all you people are shooting with your full frame and doing infrared. Am I going to come in below the radar with my Micro Four Thirds converted you're body? Not, yeah, you're not going to like it. <clears throat> See? Uh, micro Four Thirds. Not, not a Micro Four Thirds because they have a very narrow tonal range, right? It's very limited. It's very compressed because of the small chip. And, and with um, infrared, you're capturing a very, very narrow <clears throat> spectrum of tonality in, in the infrared spectrum. So you do need you do need some more latitude. So I think it's I think it'll be tough. It's yeah, tough, but yeah. try it. No, I mean try it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Permanently <laughs> void your warranty and modify one of your, no. your bodies on an experiment. Yeah, no, sure. you can Why take not? it off. Nobody will know. It's fine. Yeah. yeah all right. Mm -hmm. Famous last words. Nobody will know. Sure. <laughs> do it. Your camera. I know. I know. Uh, you know, it'd be cool though. Infrared 360. I wonder if Mark Charette has ever thought about doing infrared and in 360. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you for that. And this was Eric. Thank you, Eric Pronsky. Yeah. Good one, Eric. <clears throat> and next up is Thomas Tom Buckout. Thomas says, hanging out on the Bixby Bridge, take, uh, thanking the marine layer, layer gods for giving me a great day to shoot some rare vintage cars during the Monterey Auto Week. Oh, I didn't even know that was going on. Oh, very cool. Cool. I wonder if this is recent. Yeah, that's neat. That's got to be neat to see those things come by. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like, yeah, I like and that. And perfect angle. lighting, too. Look at those long highlights on these, these beautiful cars because of the the, the yep. giant softbox in the sky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's always nice having overcast. My brides never want that because they always think, like, oh, I want, like, this big, beautiful blue sky. I'm like, oh, no. No, we want no. overcast. Please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want you want these kinds of shadows, right? Yeah. <laughs> these yeah, it was interesting because I remember when I was going through training in the military, we were talking about the interplay of light and shadow and specular versus diffuse and all this stuff. And one of the things that kind of hit home, hit it home for me where we were talking about portraits and portrait retouching. Um, and it was the idea that light doesn't care how, you know, doesn't really care how big something is. So a mountain right. is going to cast a shadow and give you, you know, the kind of yeah. the contours of the mountain as will a pimple on someone's face. It's going to cast a shadow and show you relief when you have diffuse lighting then that shadow is minimized and things look smoother and, and nicer, especially in portraiture. So really yep. interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So this is a really fun shot. Um, one of the things that, that I noticed right away is it's tilting to the right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it needs a little counterclockwise rotation and it's not, it's not quite sharp. Um, so it looks like we've got some, back focus uh well i guess it's sharp if you wanted to focus on the windshield but the front of the car looks like there was either some motion blur or it's out of focus probably some motion blur i'm guessing so yeah. but this might look really cool in black and white you know with that yeah with that i was car. thinking that yeah because what what is color doing for this shot right should color is really not playing a part in the shot unless you want to you know, look at the, the double yellow line and the road. It's not, color is not really a, a character in the shot. I was going to say that. Yeah, I think I'd love to see this in black and white. And the other thing is this guy right here in the sky, <clears throat> I probably, <laughs> that I crop, bird. I would crop off the uh, half, half or two thirds of the top above yeah, like right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would make this a, a horizontal image because that car is kind of long and stretched out. I think it would really fit the horizontal composition. Yeah. Rotate it kind of clockwise a little bit and then make it black and white and really get some nice snappy contrast in there because that car is going to just pop off the page then. Yeah. You might be able to even you might be able to pull some detail out of those clouds too to make them a little bit more dramatic. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the fog layer whatever that is yeah yeah Yeah. a little dodging and burning and and just a you know a little bit of massaging the image um this thing will just really come to life it's timeless too this is you know a timeless image would you would you remove these cars in the background or would you leave them there I, I mean, if I wanted to build a finished image, I would remove the red car with the taillights and probably the other one ahead of it and then the little blue one around the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah. the other ones I think that I would leave. This guy right here, you leave to... him in there? Yeah, because those are two classic cars, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the Mustang, which is the red one, is not. And then there's like a Tahoe over there and... You know, the other car, the green one, way in the back, it looks like an older classic car. Maybe leave that one just because it's a, it fit, the time period tends to feel better. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And the more I look at this, the more I agree with you about that crop. Yeah, if you crop it down, then it becomes it becomes more about these these the vanishing point, you know, yep. of the of the road there. And you'd emphasize the California coastline a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be really interesting. Yep. Yeah, this is this is the kind of location. If you ever get to go back out there, if anybody's going to go out there and photograph cars, do do a couple shots where there's no cars in that spot on the freeway. Like shoot from a tripod, and then when cars come through, um, and and you want to clean up the backgrounds, it's super easy to do that because you have a plate now. You have a Mm. background, and so as the cars come through, you know if they're a little further, a little further back. Like if you want to clean something up in the background, um, it's easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. The only, the only challenge there is the, you're outdoors. So the, the changing lighting conditions right. might make it a little challenging to blend things, but yep. definitely easier than doing it without a tripod and <laughs> trying to, you know, get sure. in there and surgically remove stuff. So very cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, Thomas. Excellent shot, sir. All right, next up is Nora Zanotnis. She says, uh, Marshall Eagle, or is that a, yeah, Marshall Eagle guarding his yellow mongoose. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, Dang. That, that bird looks mad. <laughs> yeah, I ain't going nowhere near his food. <laughs> it's yours, man. <laughs> look at that yeah. beak. That beak will just rip your bicep right off. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 pretty amazing. It's it's really uh, a really a wonderful shot. I, I love the fact that, you know, he's looking right in the lens. He's looking right at the camera, you know, and there's a little bit of flesh in his beak. So and he's in that sort of protect my food position. So, yeah, yeah. And each the, the when I look at this shot, I love it just like it is. Um I don't know. Like, would I want it more? Do I want the foliage more saturated? It feels a little bit desaturated. Like Nora maybe did, maybe did that on purpose to draw attention to the subject and the is his catch there in the foreground. But do I want that more saturated or like that or vignetted? Something to draw me draw me closer to the face. Or do we want to crop it in? I don't know. What do you think? Would you crop in? Or leave it like this? What what would you do? No, I like I like the crop. I think the struggle with this image is is that the the subject and the background, the surrounding area have the same the same tonality, right? It, mm-hmm. It's 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 tonally it's flat, so we don't have a lot of depth. So what I might do is just is work to um, burn down the shrubbery in the background very carefully all the way around, and then bring up the the bird of prey in sort of contrast and some highlight and shadow detail like bring out the whites and the legs a little bit some more specular highlight on the back a little bit that will create a little bit more separation but we can't really go too far you know and it's it's painstaking the time consuming you have to just go in there very carefully and darken all the way around yeah or maybe there's multiple shots here right so there's that shot and then Maybe there's a shot that's detailed that's just of the prey with these massive predator legs standing over it, you know, <laughs> just the legs and the prey or something. Right, right. Yep. 
you know, I exactly. It. I mean, but you, you, you have to shoot these guys where they land, where they are. So, you know, this is a great perspective, nice and low to the ground. Um, right, right at the bird's eye level, which I think is, is, you know, kudos for that. That's a, that's a good place to be. Yep. Yep. She got down. Very cool. Thank you, Nora. This is a cool shot. Look at those eyes though. Staring yeah. at you. Like, clearly, if you are another predator, there's no way you're going to try to take that. <laughs> I know. There's no way you're going to attempt a, a coup. Yeah. All right. Next up is Joshua Sommerfeld. He says, a green anole, anole, anole uh, from my garden shoot this past Saturday using an imager link because Mighty destroys the image when I upload it directly. I know. I hope they're working on that, man. Uh, he shot this with his cannon. Let's take a look. Are we on yeah. 170? He said this is with 170. Is my count off? Let's take a look. Yeah, it's. I don't know what the number is anymore. Yeah, I'm thinking we're 169. I don't know. That's all right. right. No, it's a it's a it's a great image. I love I love the perspective. Um, I love the black and white. You know, knowing that this guy is is usually bright green. <clears throat> so nice presentation yeah. i mean it's always tack sharp i mean josh was meticulous with that mm -hmm. my my only my only suggestion is is that you know the 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 lizard's right arm is that an arm we call him an arm is is so bright that it's kind of drawing my attention and then you know the center of attention the brightness is in the center of the image and i would mm -hmm. i would really love to see more of that maybe burned down slightly and bring our attention more into the to the top of the head or the the face. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, subtle, right? It's a subtle difference, but mm -hmm. yeah, no, you're actually you're you're right. I wonder if he shot this with his polarizing filter, or the was it polarizing filter he was using or polarized lighting? Um, both. He was, I know he's playing with both, but using just using the filters. I think he's been doing lately. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's I a agree. great shot. Yeah. I mean, I lo love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I want to see this this hot spot over here, or just I want to I want more. I would like to see more detail on the face. Um, and you're right. This is this this right arm or appendage, and this area here are the brightest parts in the image. You shift it up over here. See a little bit yeah, more detail. Yeah, even on maybe that burning down that right, even burning down that right arm a little bit might just be what it takes. But that that thing just feels like this odd protrusion over there you know could almost mm -hmm. just clone it out entirely and yeah yeah wouldn't miss it yep let's take it right out of there but Very i love cool. the black and white treatment those are that's a really nice really nice mm -hmm. yep agreed very cool what is this thing here i'm guessing that's his ear his yep. or her ear yep. yep very nice they don't call it an ear i don't know what they call it though <laughs> <laughs> Joshua will know for sure. Yeah, yeah, I have, I'm not sure what it's called. Thank you for sharing that, Joshua Summerfield. Very nice. Bravo. And for the record, per your, I'll bring it back to us for a second. For the record, per our discussion about our live critiques that we're going to be rolling out soon, we were we were going back and forth about the best way to show images to show their detail because the service we're gonna be using is even worse than Mighty in terms of its compression algorithm and displaying images in their, their true beauty. So we're gonna do something different. We're not using Imager, but we're gonna do something different to, for the image sharing and display that's outside of you know, the cloud service. So right. that's FYI. All right, next up, Raphael Timber Geek Swift. Swift says, for the open critique, we find my lovely model Betty, a.k.a. Boo Bit, striking a pose in the dappled light under a maple tree. Look how poetic Mr. Raphael Timber Geek Swift is getting. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, look at that. That is nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Betty is just kind of posed up against a tree there for you. <laughs> yep. Hey there, Boo Boo. <laughs> <laughs> i was trying so hard to resist saying that i'm glad you i did can't it instead of me i can't i cannot resist <laughs> that's, yeah, awesome. that's yogi that's yogi right there yeah um 
it, you know, it's a it, really nice shot. I mean, I love it's it's tack sharp, which is fantastic. The mask of the face is nice and sharp. The I like the composition. You know that we can see that tree and stuff in there. Um, I I wish I just wish this was more full length, right? Like we could see the whole bear. I feel like coming in this close with that much compression, um, everything. I, there's not really anything going on. You know, mm -hmm. it's a really nice portrait of Betty, but what else? What else is Betty doing there? So you think Betty Betty needs like a a honey jar with her? <laughs> <laughs> she needs some honey dripping off her paw, or something oh. like bees or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Betty's no, like you guys are so I, stereotypical. Not all bears yeah. like honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, the light the light on her face is nice. I like how it's, you know, lighting her snout and we got some light in the eyes. So that's really great. You know, I'm sure I'm sure she was moving around and the light moves around. So really good timing there. Really good timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Got it. Got it right. It's a, it's a great portrait for sure. 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love it. Look at that claw. I see that claw. I see that claw down here. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So who would win if you if you had Nora's <laughs> Nora's shot and this guy who's gonna win in the battle for that for that lunch? I'm guessing the bird will win. The bird will win. Yeah, bird I don't will know. just I... bird will just relocate. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're both pretty pretty, pretty yeah. strong. Yep, yep. Love it, love it. Cool, man. Yeah, not much to say about the shot. It's a great shot. It's just, you know, yeah, no, there's really not a lot that 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 we can do with it I, I i did a great job Raphael. yeah did a great job. but black and white right i mean we always talk about black and white this shot i don't want to see a black and white i think the the color it puts it in place in the forest you know we see the brown of the tree and the bear i think we would lose a lot if we drop the color out of this one. Oh, absolutely plus the tones between the bear and the greenery are going to be the same so then you're going to actually lack separation and separation mm -hmm. is is what we need yep Yes, sir. Yeah. Good job, Raphael. All right. Next up is Michael Rhino. My entry for the open critique is this photo from last Tuesday evening as a paddleboarder was finishing his ride at Chatfield State Park. Look at that. The, the, the thing that catches me, <clears throat> the first is that the, the paddleboarder is really only seen in the reflection. And... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so so my my thing is is lean into that um, instead of making it a mirrored image of the horizon and the landscape, which is beautiful. But the the paddle border is really kind of the unique hook in this. So I would I would crop off like everything at the top <clears throat> and leave a maybe a little bit of the mountain top in there, or just so like here, just. Just enough to let yeah. you know to sell the that this is a reflection and not just an inverted photograph. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. something. I mean, I would really play with that crop because I think the reflection is the hero, not not anything above that. Yep. Yep. I agree. I was thinking even leaning into it even further. Like, what if you flipped it? Like, just rotate oh, yeah. it. Up, you know, so that, that it really would cause confusion because you're like, oh, why is the sky rippled? Like, oh, it's inverted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's cool. Really good shot, though. But then, you know, obviously what, what Michael was going for was the whole symmetry of the whole thing. So we've got symmetry, right. symmetry with pattern interrupted, which is awesome, right? So we've got our symmetry and then our silhouette breaking the pattern right here and then selling it. Yeah, exactly. I, I just, for me personally, I'm really drawn to that reflection and the fact mm -hmm. that I can't really see the guy. I just see the reflection better or his shadow against the water, you know, his reflection there. Yep. So I would lean into that. Like I would, I would really crop it and kind of figure out whether you want to show some of that real world horizon or if you want to crop it off and then just leave it upside down or right side up technically or flip it, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Yep. Cool shot though. Look at this post post retirement photography. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good for you, Michael. Yep. Keep going, man. Keep going. All right. And next up is Karen Sweeney. 
Karen says, for the upcoming open critique, happened upon the end of a 10 kilometer run organized by a local athletic club, Entrant 288 is rightly pleased with her achievement. All right. Look at that one. I like that. Yeah. Like that. Look at that smile. That's amazing. You know and, I, and I also, I also love the fact that um, that she, the runner, is off the ground. Both feet are off the ground. So, oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, you're right. She is in levitating yeah. mode there. That's nice. So it's kind of neat. She was just, you know, maybe she was trotting in, or she was, you know, still running or whatever. But I, I thought, what a what a cool amount of timing. You know, I, I like that a lot. I think it's kind of neat. It's one of those little hidden things in the image that I like. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I would I would want to crop it a little tighter um, from the left. I I understand keeping that tunnel back there. I understand keeping the other runner in there, but I don't. I think you could crop pretty close to the runner in the back, and what that's going to do is just give us a lot more focus on two eighty eight. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, look in the background, there's somebody else coming up. You know. Yep. Yep. Is it? I feel like it's rotated a little bit to the right. I feel like you could rotate this just a hair counterclockwise. Yes, exactly. You, you know, there's a pole back there behind her that's tilted to the right, and then this um, this line or this crack in the concrete that's running like just off of her right knee. Yep, that's really that's really kind of where it feels tilted. Is is that right there? So a little tilt to the counter counterclockwise. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. And congratulations, number 288. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's happy. She's doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you, Karen Sweeney. And I believe, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it for this week. We have our favorite. We discussed our favorite already. Is we that do. is our, is your favorite still your favorite? Yeah. 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 Still my favorite. Yeah, it was tough for me. Uh, my favorites, they're all great. Uh, my favorite was the one, that, our mutual favorite, which I'm going to show in a second here, but also the bear. You know, I love that bear oh, shot. Oh, yeah. Was, the bear shot was outstanding. I love that, too. Yeah. But but here yeah. here is our favorite from Armando. Yay. Armando Brook. Thank you, sir. Very love creative. It. Very, uh, very nice. Very nicely mm -hmm. done. Do more of these. Yeah, more like this, sir. Yeah, but his shots yeah. are always, you know, his shots are, I love it because they're very eclectic. You can't pin them down. You know, one day it could be Carnival, you know, the next day yes. it's something else. And now it's, you know, kind of a an abstract shot like this. So, yeah, it's really, really interesting. Yeah, and you know what I want to do with it? Because, you know, I've been playing with Plotograph and making cinemagraphs and stuff. Yeah. Um, I want to animate the sand to look like water yeah right just just a little ripple just a little ripple in the sand so it still looks like sand but it's kind of rippling so you're like ooh, but is that water because of the yeah. boat being there uh-huh do it you should do it you should do it and, send it and submit it let them see it yeah well congratulations sir fantastic shot thank you for that um and then our next critique which is coming up. Our next recorded formal critique is coming up on the 20th of this month, this month, September 20th, Monday. We'll record right. that one. And the topic is Troy Miller. What is the topic? You forgot, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I had to think for a second. Sorry. It's like deer in the headlights. You forgot your lines. You forgot your lines. <laughs> lines oh okay i get it <laughs> oh it is uh, um you know inspirational things, inspirational yep. it, well okay inspiration Inspir inspirational things, things that inspire or inspire you so um it could be could be your grandkids could be uh you know a poster in your neighbor's yard it could be you know, it could be the birds in the woods that you like to go photograph, like what, what, you know, whatever that thing is. So it's a little bit more personal. So it's an opportunity for you to kind of create something that tells a story. Yeah. Yep. And you have two yep. weeks. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this should be easy because, you know, we all have things that inspire us. 
right? In one way or another, in varying degrees, but you know, there are things that expire us. So that inspire, not expire. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not, yeah. It's not, yeah. It's not about gun control or anything like that. This is about inspiration. <laughs> about right. what ins- it could be right. something as simple as the sun, right? The sun inspires you it could or be lots of things. Yeah. 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 Yep. So cool. Yeah, that should be exciting. That'll be really cool. So that one will be, yeah, we'll record that on the 20th and inspiration. Anything else you want to throw in there before we draw this one to a close? I don't think so. I think that's it. We've said all the things that need said, all of them. Yes. We've covered we, everything. We've done it all. We've said it and done it all. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for your submissions this week. Congratulations to Armando Brooke for being this week's favorite shot. We will see, uh, hopefully, as many of you as possible this Friday at the Twip Pro Member Mixer, if you're a member. Looking forward to seeing you over there. And you guys should be getting a note, uh, an email, probably at some time today. I'll be sending that out today slash and or tomorrow about... Mr. Miller here's brand new Capture One course, which we just launched. So we pushed it out as a sneak peek this Friday to Founding Club members only. You guys, of course, get access to it at no additional charge. Um, And it goes out to the public today. So this week is launch week. And... We do Wednesday. We're going to do kind of a walkthrough of that course and some some Capture One tips on the new version of Capture One, right? Or the new some of the new features in Capture One. You want to talk about that just a little bit, Troy? What are you going to talk about? Yeah, I mean, there's just they're always releasing you know updates and then major releases. They they do pretty much annually, but they've been pushing in some pretty cool tools um, into the workflow system. You know, like smart brushes and smart selections and things that really just help us dive really deep into an image and very specific you know tweak it and tune it and bake it into what we want so i like them a lot here's a lot of a lot of good stuff excellent all right so it's coming your way soon look for look for an email on that with an invite link and all that stuff too and please come and support this guy he put a lot of hard work blood sweat and tears into that course it's pretty amazing so yeah come check it out come check it out support your your fellow twip pro member right here all right man we'll leave it right there and uh, we'll see you next time sounds great Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. This is Twitter. This episode was sponsored by MPB, the world's largest online platform for used photo and video kit. Visit mpb.com.